Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is going to be all about using Pango books now that I've been doing it for a few months. This is going to answer some frequently asked questions that I've gotten on my previous video about trying out Pango books for the first time and is just going to give you an update on my experience now that I'm a few months in and I have been using it consistently. If you haven't seen it yet, I will link my original video up above. I did a sponsored video with Pango Books trying out their app for the very first time as a way to sell my excess books that I had sitting in my closet. And I kind of take you through the process, including some missteps along the way as I was trying to post books for sale and see how it went. I had heard amazing things from friends about Pango Books beforehand, and so I wasn't too surprised to see that I had a positive experience using their app, but I was impressed at just how easy they make it. So now that I've been doing this for a few months, I want to talk a little bit more in depth about my experience, thoughts, tips, answering some questions that I've gotten in comments on that video, and just kind of giving you a little bit of a peek into how I've been using it since then. Full disclosure, the original video was sponsored, although I was the one who reached out to them, they didn't reach out to me. This video is not sponsored, I just thought it would be helpful for the community. So again, if you're unfamiliar with Pango Books, it's sort of like an elevated Craigslist, but for books, or like Poshmark but specifically for books. And they have done an amazing job designing the app and they continue to improve it and upgrade it. I've got to say one of my favorite features that they've added since I made my video that is fantastic is that now when you are adding a book for sale, if it's a book that is in their system and there are other copies, they will tell you what the going rate is so that you have a better sense of how to price the book and what it's selling for. You can even go and see active listings, recently sold listings, to get a sense of what's selling for that title, which I love. So I really appreciate the fact that they continue to improve the product. That's already a really good product, but they continue to really listen to the people using it and make improvements that just make the experience better and better. Really impressed with that. Some specific questions that I've gotten are about the packing materials and the way that you do the shipment. So I think what I'm going to do is two things. I'm going to answer a few of those questions verbally, but I'm also going to take you along with me as I pack an order so you can sort of see how the process works and how I've got it down to a science at this point because <laughs> I've been doing it for a while. Packing materials are not provided. You do need to come up with your own. However, you can and are even encouraged to recycle packages. So if you're getting boxes in the mail, you can save them and reuse those packing materials to send out books that people have purchased from you. That is something that I do. I kind of do a mix of things where I have boxes and packages on hand for if I run out of recyclable materials or I don't have something that's the right size. And I do recommend doing that if you are able to. Other supplies that I do purchase is I use tissue paper to wrap the books. I also have some brown packing paper that I use to pad the books if they don't fill up all the space in the box or package I'm sending them in. Packing tape, obviously, and then some of the little goodies that I like to include. But generally it's pretty simple. Once you've sold a book, you just go into the sold listing, you print out the label, you package up your book, you tape the label onto the outside of the package, and you drop it off at the post office. And that is it. It is incredibly simple. You don't have to do very much and it's automatically calculating all of the shipping costs for you. So you don't have to weigh the packages. When you do create your initial listing, you say the approximate weight of the book. So is it a light paperback, a heavy paperback, a heavy hardback, etc. And then based on that information, it auto populates. Now, if for some reason they make a mistake and you notice when you look at your label that the shipping is for a weight that is too low, you can just send them a message to adjust it and they will very quickly get back to you. I've had to do this once and it was super simple. They just adjusted it. They eat the cost of that if they make a mistake instead of putting it back onto the purchase and purchasing it. Love that. And then you just print a new label and take it to the post office and that's it. So it's very simple. I do recommend packaging the books nicely. You're going to get better reviews from your customers if you do that. And also you want to make sure that they're not getting damaged in transit. 
that's part of why I do wrap my orders in tissue paper and I try to include a little thank you note and a bookmark and maybe a sticker and use some cute little washi tape to tape it closed. It just makes it a more fun experience and I've also now been on both sides of it in terms of selling and also buying because one thing that is kind of nice about the app is that you can either get your money paid out through a bank transfer or through PayPal. If you do a bank transfer it takes like four or five days but it's free. There's no fees, which is amazing. Or you can use that as credit, Pingo Books, to purchase books from other sellers on the site. So I have done a mix of those things. I have gotten payouts from some of the money that I've made selling books, and then I have used some of that credit as a way to purchase books from other people. And I've got to say, there are some sellers who are just kind of like basic where there's not a lot of added detail and, you know, like that's fine. But it is really a nice experience when you have somebody who's taken the time to make it something special. I think that's kind of cool. So I try to do that for people buying books from me. Now you might be wondering, okay, how many books have you actually sold? How much have you been making on it? There was a big flurry at the beginning when I first listed stuff, and I have tended to have a lot of listings, but I have been amazed at how much more money I am making selling my books on Pango than I was taking them to a used bookstore for store credit. It is just night and day. This is so much of an improvement it's it's pretty wild which I guess makes sense because like bookstores have overhead and everything whereas this Pango Books takes a really small percentage of your fee of what what you're making and it's very reasonable so I end up making a lot more so since that video where I started my Pango Books account I have sold 115 listings which is pretty great and I have earned $618.40 which is wild. I will say I had a handful of like special editions and things that went for bigger chunks of money and you do make more when people purchase bundles but I still I'm really impressed with that. Now some of that has gone back into me buying books on Pango Books and going right back into that economy but some of it I have taken as payouts and aside from that first flurry I would say on average I'm probably earning a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars a month selling on Pango Books which is great. Now this isn't going to be the same for everybody. Obviously I have a lot more books than average that are cycling through that are coming in and going back out so it's going to be higher for me than for some other people but I do think that this is a really nice extra stream of income and also way to subsidize books that I'm wanting to purchase including even some special editions. I'll show you my latest purchase on Pango Books because it's so beautiful and y'all it was $12.00. $12 plus shipping. It's this beautiful Illumicrate edition of The Red Scholar's Wake by Aliette de Bedard. I mean, look how gorgeous. I mean, what? What? And I used Pingo Bucks for that. So things like that have been really awesome and I've enjoyed having that as um, a way of doing things. Other things I think are useful to know is one, if you are going on vacation or if you have an emergency or you're sick or whatever, it is really easy to shut down your shop for the time being. So there was a week I shut it down because we were traveling for a funeral and it was really simple to do. It just kind of like makes it look like there's no listings and then as soon as you're ready you just click a button and it goes right back up so they make it really simple i'll be doing that again when i go on vacation with my family in july i'll just take down the shop right before i go and then once i'm home pop it back up i will say they recommend that you ship your books within two to three days and they do that by actual hours and if you start getting up on that three day mark they will send you an email reminding you because the buyer is able to cancel cancel that order if they, if you don't ship it right away and there is a premium on shipping it. So I've made it kind of a habit to go to the post office a couple times a week when I'm getting orders in. If I don't have orders coming in then whatever but I do try to get them shipped out as quickly as possible and it ends up being pretty easy because you do literally just drop it off once it's ready to go and once you get a system down for packaging them it's pretty simple. One other thing that I'll talk about is you can offer discounts and I've played around a little bit with different things on this. 
because you're trying to hit this kind of sweet spot between wanting to entice people to buy the books that you have for sale, but also not wanting to offer so many discounts that your profit becomes really small between what Pango Books takes. And then like if you if I offer free shipping, for example, that can eat away at it pretty quickly. So sometimes I'll offer free shipping for large orders. But normally it's like a percent discount or a dollar discount if you buy so much. So I usually have something running and I'll kind of tweak it and play around with it a little bit. You can mess with it and see what works for you and what you feel comfortable offering. But I, I do think, you know, we're on there. We all love a deal. So, you know, when you offer those things, some people will take advantage of them. What other questions do people have? People were asking how much I think I'm spending on packing supplies for a package. And again, it does somewhat vary depending on whether I'm using mostly recycled materials or using things that I purchased myself. On a package where I'm using mostly recycled materials, it's costing me, you know, maybe like 40 or 50 cents, if that, maybe less. On things that I'm using, all things I purchased myself, we're probably looking at a couple of dollars in total amongst everything. But you can buy things in bulk, they'll cost you less if you know that you're going to be using them a lot long term. For instance, I initially bought tissue paper that was much more expensive because it was a smaller quantity and then I was like well I'm using this for every order so I went out and bought like a big you know several hundred sheets of it and it was a whole lot cheaper <laughs> per sheet to do that. So it's things like that. If you find something that you're like, okay, this is the thing I'm using for every order and this is the thing that I'm doing regularly, you can save on your packing materials that way. I will say because I originally had all of the stuff just kind of sitting in my closet and it needed some organization, so I actually decided to buy a shelf to help me organize the books that I'm selling and it has been fantastic. It's able to hold the books, it's able to hold my packing materials, and I am very pleased with it. It's kind of big, but it fits okay into my closet and I am much happier. If you're interested in checking out the shelf that I have, I will have it linked down below. I bought it on Amazon. It's one of their Amazon Basics supply shelves. It was pretty affordable. It's just a lot taller than I was expecting, but it holds a lot and that's been great. So I now have kind of an organization system for how I do things and what my setup looks like for the books that I have for sale. In terms of adding new listings, you could do it more frequently than I do. I am generally adding them about once a month, maybe twice a month, but usually it's at the end of the month after I finished filming my wrap up and I have a new batch of books that I read and maybe some of them I'm keeping and some of them I'm going to pass along. I will have a, a stack of things that I then add to my shop. So that's kind of how that timing is working for me. I don't know that I have anything else super specific, but hopefully that's helpful information if you're thinking about starting your Pango shop or you're trying to kind of figure out how it works. I have been very happy with my experience using them and just really impressed with the quality of the books that I've received as well from sellers. I try to be really good about taking lots of pictures so if there's any damage to a book I include pictures of it in the listing so that everybody knows exactly what they're getting and so far that's gone really well for me. I haven't had any negative experiences but I have heard from people where something went wrong or a seller never mailed them the book The Pango Books usually eats the cost of that. So um, yeah, customer service seems really good. I've had very positive experiences. And I would recommend it if you're interested in checking them out. If you want to shop my shelves, the link to my Pango Books shop is always linked down below. And I do still have a discount code that you can use for your first order if you've never used them before. It's just only good in the app. You can't use it on the desktop version. So all of that information is in the video description if you want to check it out. Now I'm going to take you along with me to pack an order. I got a very small order for one book that came in yesterday, so I need to package it up and get it ready to take to the post office. Let's see how I do that. Okay, so I'm going to come in here to my shelf. I grabbed it earlier. This is the book that was sold, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to grab some packing supplies. This has tape, sharpie, scissors, etc. Basic stuff. This is my giant thing of tissue paper. Then I'm going to use this box I saved from Harlequin. I just need to take some of the stickers off it. I've got my tissue paper. The book goes in the middle. Then I add a bookmark, a sticker for Chapter 3 Podcast, I have lots of extras, and a little thank you note. I'm going to wrap this up. 
This month for Pride, I'm using a rainbow colored washi tape. Book is ready to go. So I've got my package. This goes in here. Since there's a lot more space, I'm going to get some paper to pad it with. This I kept from, I think a Sephora order. Reuse stuff when you can. The bottom came undone a little bit, so I'm gonna tape it to make sure it's secure. It is nicely taped up. Now I just need to print my shipping label. So I just tape the label onto the top and this is ready to go to the post office. Like I said, it's pretty easy to do. At some point, maybe I'll invest in a label printer so I don't have to tape them on, but this works fine. And I just have like a regular black and white printer. Super easy. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if you have any additional questions. I think I pretty much covered all of the things that were top of mind for Panko books. And I would love to hear from you if you have had good experiences using them as well. I know some of y'all have purchased from my shop, which has been kind of fun. Like okay, a couple times I've seen people post it on Instagram. And I sometimes I know, sometimes I recognize usernames or names of, of who it is. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, hey, cool. I didn't realize that that was somebody who follows me because you just never know because anybody can purchase from your shop. It's not just people who follow you. So anyway, talk to me in the comments down below. If y'all like this video, it helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.